Apple's promising that you'll be soon able to use genuine Apple parts from another device. While it'll still require Apple's server to approve the part, it's promised not to limit features as things currently are. This will even extend to biometric sensors like Touch ID and Face ID. Given Apple already has a database of individual part serial numbers, this new system should support many iPhone models, although the exact supported models are still unknown. They're also committed to ensuring lost and stolen devices can't be parted out by implementing activation lock for replacement parts. It really sounds like a win-win situation. And it could be if this new parts activation lock doesn't suffer from the same issues that current versions of iCloud lock do. Activation lock is designed to stop someone from reusing a lost or stolen phone by allowing the owner to mark it as such online if it was lost or stolen. But many of us know that even if a device is not explicitly marked as lost or stolen, Apple will still prevent that device from being reused if it was not signed out of iCloud before reset. Will this apply to parts? Will they be locked by Apple's software when even not explicitly marked as being from a lost or stolen phone? Well, from Apple's current wording, yes, stating this will affect parts obtained from another device with activation lock or lost mode meaning if a device isn't marked as lost or stolen. This may create the issue of not being able to refurbish broken parts, a common practice and additional revenue for most phone repair shops. A customer might bring in a phone with a broken screen. In many cases, while the outer glass is broken, the underlying LCD or OLED is in working condition. A repair shop might sell the part after it's been replaced or refurbish it themselves to reuse on another device. Allowing for once fixable displays worth in some cases hundreds of dollars to now be unusable e-waste. As the screen was sourced from a phone that's still in use, does that mean the old part is locked to the iCloud account on that phone? Or will Apple note the new display and unlink the old one from the device? If Apple can keep a record of individual serial numbers of parts inside generations of iPhones, I'm sure they could create an activation lock system that truly only locked stolen phones. In a recent legislative hearing in the US state of Oregon, one of the inventors of Apple's patented parts pairing system spoke against Oregon's right to repair bill. My name is John Perry. I am the senior manager for the secure system design team at Apple. Uh, my team is responsible for ensuring the hardware security of Apple devices globally. He had some good points in his prepared speech on Apple's commitment to maintain security and privacy. Because it is absolutely critical that any legislation is crafted with protections for consumer security, safety, and privacy. Apple supports a consumer's right to repair. We also continue to expand our support for third-party parts used in repair. In the case of a third-party part, Apple's calibration servers are not applicable. When a third-party part is installed in an Apple device, the device will attempt to activate the part and offer the best possible performance based on that part's capabilities. But when it came to question time, things became interesting. When Apple was asked, the only thing they said was delete this section. Don't, don't speak to parts pairing. I personally don't know of language that we were comfortable with. So are all parts within an Apple phone, are all of them paired? No, they are not. Yeah, there are many parts in your iPhone that are not paired. Okay. Um, you know, are... speakers and other things. Yeah. Um, you know, the the only time we deliberately disable functionality in one of our devices with parts pairing is around biometric security. So the Touch ID sensor and the Face ID sensor uh, will not work if it cannot be authenticated by the software. So the question is, does Apple use parts pairing to, quoting from the bill, prevent or inhibit an independent repair provider or an owner from installing or enabling the function of a replacement part. No, sir. After swapping the screens on these M1 MacBook Pros, they now both don't enter sleep when the lid is closed and also display identical artifacts on the screen. With the parts from one iPhone swapped into another, the cameras are now behaving erratically. Having only swapped the screens between these two phones, you can see the existence of True Tone has vanished from settings. Auto brightness also no longer works, which can result in the display appearing dead when in fact the brightness is just all the way down. Is it fair for me to say that Apple doesn't use parts pairing to reduce functionality any more than necessary to keep the, the device operating? 
That's correct. Okay. As I said before, the only place we deliberately disable functionality is around the biometric sensors. So I guess the point my constituent is making, if you're doing all that, you are within the sideboards of the wording of this bill. And the, you know, the bottom line question is, why would you object to the to this bill, to the parts pairing uh, part of this bill? That I think that's a lot of what us would really like Again, to Again, and I completely time. acknowledge that the bill does not outlaw parts pairing, right? I mean, I think we can continue to do what we do within our own service provider networks unrestricted. The concern that we have is that the language as written also says that we have to allow the use of parts unknown to us. Here, I have two iPhone 15 Pros. One has a replacement display and the other is original. Running a light and proximity sensor test, I need to put each phone to my ear until the phone vibrates. After which, we can see the result. To no surprise, the one with the replacement display fails the light sensor test. This is because the software is preventing it from working with the replacement display. With my new application iTest, you can test just about all hardware functionality. There's a lot of components inside a phone and it can be hard to test them all easily till now. If you've just repaired your phone and want to verify it's working correctly, or maybe you're selling or purchasing a used device iTest can help you make a more informed decision about a device's condition. iTest is currently available for iOS and will be coming to Android in May. I understand that some stolen devices are parted out in China and sold as parts, but the fundamentals of this new system have given us more questions than answers. How would one check if a part was marked as lost or stolen? Apple doesn't even give you a way to easily tell when you're buying a whole device, so how can someone tell with just a single part? At the end of the day, this new system may only complicate third-party repair and make it even more compelling to just pay Apple's repair fee and forego the risk of getting a locked part. But what happens when a part is marked as lost or stolen? Well, according to Apple's press release, it won't be eligible for calibration, just like third-party parts, meaning you'll likely just receive a warning message and reduced functionality as parts do now with the current system. So parts Apple claim to be stolen will act in the same way to third-party parts. I wouldn't call that much of a real deterrent for theft. Likely, the worst thing that could happen to your current phone is your replacement parts remain working as they currently do. Similar to today, Apple will record all replacement parts, whether installed by Apple, used Apple parts, or third-party parts. This in itself isn't a bad thing as it allows users to understand what parts have been replaced and is essentially a logbook service history for a smartphone. Bloomberg has just recently exposed Apple for shredding more than half a million traded in phones, many of which could have been resold. In fact, the company employed to do so had been selling some on the side. That was until being taken to court for breaching their agreement with Apple. Locking devices not marked as stolen Pairing or limiting the use of replacement parts and shredding in traded devices results in a fewer number of used devices in circulation. With less used options, more people will have to purchase a new one. I do hope this new system will be at least some improvement over the current one, but something tells me this is still not what we expected to see from right to repair laws. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the playlist for tech that's not what it seems. If you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.